Good morning. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Today I'll be reading from the gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 24 to 31, in the New International Version. Please follow along as I read. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord, my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which were not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Here ends today's reading of the gospel. Thanks be to God. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness. He humbled him
Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, as we come to the study of your word, we ask your blessing upon us. We ask that you will encourage us, that you will teach us from your revelation. Teach us from the life of Christ, the lives of the apostles, the writings of the prophets. Father, help us to take all of your truth and impress it deeply upon our souls that we may live it out today and every day. Father, we pray that as we remember and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord, that you will use it to encourage us and strengthen us to live out our faith in him each day and all to your glory. We pray this all in Jesus' name. We ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our hearts here will please you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So why is it that Easter is such an important day for Christians. How did it become such a big holiday? In years past, Easter was the biggest holiday on the calendar, but more recently, Christmas has surpassed Easter. Why is Easter so important? Well, Easter is important to Christians because Easter represents the heart of the gospel. It represents the core of Christianity. Easter is the reason why the church exists. Obviously, I'm not talking about fluffy bunnies or baby chicks or candy or baskets or eggs, which are all fun. I'm not talking about family get-togethers and quality time and a special meal, though that's important too. The heart of Easter is the heart of the gospel. And what's that? Jesus is alive. He died and came back to life. He was resurrected. He was executed on a cross, and God brought him back to life on Easter. Both of our worship services today have been all about this. If you were listening to the children's message a few minutes ago, you saw the Romans nail him to the cross and die and be buried. If you were worshiping with us at sunrise, you watched as Mary Magdalene discovered the empty tomb and met the risen Jesus outside of it. And we've read together the Bible as Peter and John marveled at the empty tomb. And as the angels conversed with Mary, you were also got to be a fly on the wall today as Jesus appeared to the disciples in a locked room and proved his resurrection by showing them his still present wounds in his hands and feet and side. The heart of the gospel is this. Jesus died on the cross and three days later came back to life. On the cross, Jesus paid the penalty for our sins. In his resurrection, he gave us all the proof that we need that he accomplished that mission. So on Easter, we celebrate the confirmation of God's salvation. Jesus died so that your sins could be forgiven. But there is a condition, and it's doubting Thomas who makes that condition clear. Remember, he wasn't with the others when Jesus initially appeared to them. So, he struggles to believe that Jesus is alive. Even though he hears the others talking about it, even though they are confident, even though they do everything they can to convince him, Thomas will not believe. In fact, he says, unless I see his hands, the marks of nails, and place my finger in those marks, and place my hand on his side, I will never believe. But I want you to listen. Listen to what happens when he finally sees Jesus himself in the flesh, alive, and the marks as he desired. And listen carefully to what Jesus says to Thomas. See if you can't hear that essential condition needed to receive the blessings purchased by Christ on the cross. John 20, 26 to the end. It says, eight days later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. And he put out a hand. And place it here in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? 
Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Did you catch it? Belief in Jesus is the condition to receive salvation. Belief in his identity as the Son of God. Belief that his sacrifice on the cross was for you and for your sins. And belief that he rose again from the dead. This is the heart of the gospel. God offers us forgiveness on the condition that we believe in Jesus. That's why John 3.16 became so well known around the world. That's one verse that encapsulates the heart of the gospel. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him, all those are so important, will not perish but have eternal life. All those who believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. The gospel is so simple. Even the youngest of children can understand it. I've heard it explained by a three-year-old who said, Jesus died to eat my sin. It's that simple. Jesus died to take away our sins. He died so that we could have our sins forgiven. That is, if we believe. That's the condition. But that belief cannot be in just anything. Listen again to John 20, 31. These things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Our faith, our belief, has to be in Jesus. God doesn't bless faith in anything else. I've watched so many movies and heard so many stories and listened to so many books where the moral of the story is belief. But the belief is so often in something other than Jesus. Almost always. They teach that if you believe in yourself, you can do it. Or if you believe that things will work out, they will. Or if you believe in your friends, they'll come through for you. You'll make it through. Or maybe even things like the judicial system. If you believe in the judicial system, justice will prevail. Sometimes they even come into a spiritual realm and they say, if you have faith in the divine, whatever that means. Our society loves to believe in things, anything and everything, ourselves, others, our systems, so long as it's not Jesus. The Bible is clear, however. God blesses faith only when that faith is in him and him alone. God doesn't bless faith in the Hindu teachings. God doesn't bless faith in the Buddha, whichever Buddha you want to claim. God doesn't bless faith in Allah. God doesn't bless faith even in Christianity if that faith is mixed with other things. God blesses faith only when it is in Jesus and him alone. This is one area where God will not compromise. The heart of the gospel is that in believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, you will have life, eternal life. So my message today is simple. It's the heart of the gospel. If you want to have life, You've got to have faith in Jesus. If you don't have faith, you won't have life everlasting in heaven. Today is the day to begin believing, if you haven't already. And if you do believe, if you have faith already, today is the day to thank Jesus with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and all your strength and to recommit to living each day for him, looking for ways to help others to also come to believe and share in that eternal life as well.
today, Easter, is the day we celebrate Jesus' resurrection to life. Why? Because it points to the life that he promises to all of us who believe in him. Won't you believe today? Let's pray. Jesus, today we remember your resurrection. The Bible says that you are the first person to be resurrected from the dead to eternal life, but that you are not the last. Each of us who believes in you have that promise, and for this we give you thanks. God, for those who don't yet believe, I pray that just as you, Jesus, breathed the Holy Spirit on your disciples, that you will give breath and the Holy Spirit on anyone listening to this. Holy Spirit, then transform their heart and bring them to faith in Jesus, that they may have life everlasting. Today, if that's you who's listening to my voice, I invite you to pray with me now. If you want to accept Jesus, pray with me. Repeat what I'm about to say. Mean it in your heart. God will hear you and transform you from the inside out forevermore. Pray with me. Jesus, I do believe in you. You are the Son of God. You did die on the cross. And I want to the gift you promise, forgiveness for my sins, and eternal life with you forever in heaven. Please forgive all that I have done and help me to be faithful to you and to obey your commands. Help me to live my life to your glory from now on. Thank you for saving me from my sin. Today I accept your sacrifice and become your child. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If that was you and you accepted Christ for the first time, please reach out and contact our church. We'd love to pray with you and pray for you. And if you have questions, do what we can to answer them uh, with God's word. Um, and we'd love to help you find a Bible-believing church, a Bible-teaching church in your area, wherever that may be. Just reach out and we'll do what we can. And before I give the benediction today, there's been something I've wanted to do for years. <clears throat> Maybe even since I came to Gwinston uh, over 16 years ago. But because of the nature of ministry, I haven't been able to do it. See, I've wanted to sit down and read the Bible from start to finish, beginning to end, nonstop. Now, I may have to pause for sleep. I might not make it uh, without sleeping. But this week, I'm planning to start at Genesis and to read right through the end of Revelation. And the only reason I'm able to do this is because I'm not allowed to be out and about visiting and ministering with you. So I'm going to take advantage to fulfill a dream that I've had ever since I first started um, in the ministry with you so long ago. And while I'm doing this, I want to encourage each of you, and I'm hoping that this will encourage you, to use some of this time, to set it aside, to engage in God's Word directly. As Christians who believe in the power of the Bible, we have to put our money where our mouth is. That means reading it. I know that some of you have told me that it's hard to read, and today I want to give you some tools to help, along with the motivation and encouragement. First of all, our church treasurer, Arlena, has developed a beautiful website designed to help people and encourage them in their reading of the Bible. It's called thewordway.com, without spaces or punctuation, thewordway.com. It's filled with uh, reading guides, devotions, encouragement, some instruction, and you can uh, log on, sign up, and read through the Bible with that help. Also. Today there are several movies available that portray the events of the Bible. Some of them go word for word through different sections. I know that the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of John are both available word for word as movies and will help us as we try to read and um, understand the Bible as it brings it to life. 
Also, this weekend only, Jesus from Sight and Sound is being offered free of charge, streaming on the internet, and you can check out the details to that in our e-news and bulletin. One other way to read the Bible is to listen to it being read out loud. BibleGateway.com is a great way to do that, as well as some many other sites, I'm sure. Also, I'm planning on live streaming my reading, my reading experiment. I estimate that it'll take about 72, 72 hours to read it from cover to cover, out loud. And if you want to listen in to your pastor reading, and maybe use that as a motivation and encouragement to hear God's Word, and encourage you and empower you to enter into God's Word along with me, you're welcome to tune in. This, unfortunately, means I won't have time to do our daily devotions each evening. But if you want to, you can listen to a portion of Scripture being read instead of the devotion in place of the devotion. Now, I'm planning on pausing the recording in between each book to stretch my legs and maybe get some sleep. And I'm planning on praying each morning with our telephone prayer group. So each book uh, I'm planning to have be its own individual live stream raw and unedited, so I apologize in advance for the interruptions, the, the breaks, uh, the noises in the background, whatever they may be. Uh, and I want to note that this will be an inconvenience to my family somewhat over the next several days, and um, I, will, I will have to take some pauses to be with them and spend time with them. But my hope is to get through God's Word in its entirety in the next few days. In any case, if I'm able to get through the whole thing, it will always be a resource for our church and for you to both use now and into the future. And my hope is that even if you don't read the whole Bible right away, it will inspire you to read it with greater regularity and perhaps with greater enthusiasm. My plan is to start tomorrow morning, Lord willing, and if the internet holds up, I'll hopefully complete sometime later in the week. Now, I invite you to receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you peace, both now and forevermore, on this Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Christ came back to life. He has risen. Amen. Thank you.